Hi guys, I'm Paulie from MSM1.com. I'm a senior macro analyst here, and today I'll be sharing with you guys what is next for Singapore's economy. Singapore's economy closed 2019 out with a decent pickup in economic momentum, as it showed signs of a recovery. The US Sino trade truce, pickup in semi corn demand, as well as the bottoming in global electronic cycle, have supported a rebound in Singapore's trade related sectors. Before the outbreak of COVID 19, we were expecting economic growth to rebound likely in the first few quarters of 2020. Since the outbreak, we expect a delay in Singapore's export-driven recovery. Regionally, we expect to see incoming waves of stimulus in Asia to fight the economic drag from the virus and more importantly from Chinese policy makers. Such impact will benefit Singapore's open and trade exposed economy. And domestically, we expect MAS to pitch in further on easing measures should the impact drag on. And that is on top of the recently announced budget stimulus. The collective stimulus measures, both regionally and domestically, should work in tandem to support Singapore's growth. Accounting for the various lag, we see more upside to growth in the second half of 2020 and a higher possibility of a modest economic recovery. Singapore's Ministry of Trade and Industry has downgraded the forecast for 2020's economic growth to between minus 0.5% to 1.5% year on year in 2020. Overall, we do not expect the outbreak to derail Singapore's economic recovery, but rather to delay it. COVID-19's outbreak has inflicted a material impact on many key industries. Singapore's economic relation with China's economy is a factor that amplifies the economic impacts on many industries. Over the years, China played an increasing large part in these different industries. This has resulted in a more severe economic blowback as compared to the damages done by 2003 SARS. The outbreak has also disrupted global supply chains due to factors such as factory shutdown, lack of manufacturing components as well as manpower shortages. The trend in offshore manufacturing to China has made global businesses prone to such disruption and Singapore is no exception. On the equity front, our local banks such as DBS, OCBC and UOB, as well as property developers such as Capital Land have significant revenue exposure to the greater China region. Based on our estimates, roughly one-fifth of STI index earnings is generated from within the region, making earnings vulnerable to declines. Headwinds on discretionary spending also means that travel, retail and F&B type companies may see weakness to earnings as well. After facing negative earnings revision totaling minus 9.2% last year due to the US-China trade war concerns, estimates of STI's fiscal year 2020's EPS was revised down by minus 3.5% in the year to date. With such drastic earnings revision, we believe much of the market's risks are already priced in, possibly leaving lesser room for downwards adjustment. For fiscal year 2020, we expect earnings growth to be flat if not minimal. Currently, the SDR is trading at 12.4 PE of around 12.5 times, which is one standard deviation below its 10 years average of 14 times. This is also lower than our fair PE ratio of 15 times allotted to the Singapore's equity market. Should the SDI swing to a fair value, we expect an upside potential of more than 30% by end during 2022. This is accompanied by a relatively attractive dividend yield of around 4.5% to 5.5% for the next two years. This means that the investors are getting compensated while waiting for the inexpensive Singapore equities to converge back to its fair value. Overall, we decide to maintain 4 stars very attractive rating for Singapore's equity. Should COVID-19 prolong and we anticipate further material impact on the economy and corporate earnings, we will re-evaluate the projections and the star ratings.